On Wednesday, December 13th, the world of entertainment was shaken with the passing of Stephen Twitch Boss at just 40 years old. He was described by most as love and light. Twitch rose to fame in 2008 when he competed on the dance show So You Think You Can Dance. Nah, I mean, this is this is absolutely ridiculous. I never thought that a dance floor would take me this far, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but hopefully there's more to come. After that, he was a DJ and co-executive producer of The Ellen DeGeneres Show, which ended in 2022. The feelings of, of leaving Ellen has been uh, celebratory first and foremost. Obviously, there's a little there's a little bit of sadness because we really did build a family over there, and I'm going to miss everybody. Twitch was also known for his viral dances with his wife, Allison Holker. He leaves behind his wife, three children, and an impact on many people's lives. Well, shortly after the passing of Twitch was announced, it made waves across social media, stirring up the topic of check in on your strong friends, highlighting the fact that many people who are suffering from depression or mental illnesses aren't who you would necessarily expect. So to help with this discussion is Dr. Anna Ord, who is the Dean of the College of Health and Behavioral Science at Regent University. So Dr. Ord, thank you so much for being with us today for this discussion. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. Well, reports say that after a two-year decline, the number of suicides actually increased in 2021. Why do you think that is? So I wish I could give a kind of short or simple answer. And the answer is we frankly don't really know why. And it's important to understand that the causes for suicide are very complex and there are many risk factors. So we saw a little bit of the decline during 2020, the year when the pandemic was at its highest in terms of suicidality, in terms of suicide rates. And that could be hypothesized because families maybe stayed together more in their homes. People were teleworking or uh, learning remotely in their homes during that time and we know that isolation can play into suicidality so that's one hypothesis why why the numbers went a little bit down about three percent down in 2020 and in 2021 we're seeing them go back up to pre-pandemic levels um and that increase can be associated with a number of factors just the overall pandemic stress many lost loved ones some folks lost jobs, huge financial hits, lost their homes, things like that. So again, we don't know exactly why, but all of these factors may create a perfect storm, if you will, that can contribute to this increase in suicides. But we need to examine this more, what's going on. Well, we've seen some conversations recently, a lot, a lot of public discussion, Naomi Judd, now Twitch, about suicide. Is the stigma that's surrounding mental health, is that decreasing? So um, the answer would be probably yes. And in some ways, we still have a long road ahead. So I am very um, optimistic to see that there's more conversation in the media on TV, we're talking about this now about mental health. So that's encouraging to see. I think we need to normalize mental health and seeking mental health services, just like any medical services, right? If somebody breaks a leg, we will rally around them, get them to the hospital, get them the support that they need, get them help, and that's okay, normal in our society. And when it comes to mental health, that is not necessarily the case. There's still the stigma. There's shame, right, a little bit. Um, I need to be able to get through this on my own. And so that stigma is still very much present. And it is very hopeful to see more conversation happening. And we still have a huge, very long road ahead of us. Even though I'm seeing positive um, decreases in stigma, Still, folks are not necessarily seeking mental health services at the same rates or with the same openness as they're seeking physical health health services. Yeah, and it's it's unfortunate to see that once a suicide happens, then we start to have these conversations. And in reality, I feel like we need to have the conversations before that. Um, so, and we're seeing a lot more attention brought to suicides amongst those who seem to have it 
altogether. And I actually saw, saw a stat recently that said 90% of suicides are actually impromptu. It's kind of just a spur of the moment thing. They make the decision and, the, and they go with it. Um, and I'm not sure that was the case for Twitch, but obviously he was the type of person many people are saying, oh my gosh, he seemed to have it all together. Why should we be checking in on what people say are our strong friends or people who um, seem to really mask well what's going on deep inside? Absolutely. So um, there is no really way by just looking at a person or interacting with them to with 100% certainty to say, are they suicidal or not? Yes, there are some warning signs and we can talk about what they are so that we're all aware of what warning signs can be. But you are right. Many individuals that do um, to do carry out suicide, they their families and loved ones will say, we didn't see that coming, or there were no warning signs, or um, they seemed like they have it all together. And that is why it's so important not to assume, right, that my strong friend has it all together. And so the best advice or encouragement I would give is check in on your friends, even the ones that seem strong and have it all together. And a lot of times in our society, we're very busy. We're going 100 miles an hour. Everybody has a lot of responsibilities. And we do this sort of surfacey checks, right? How are you doing? And the person will say, I'm fine, right? And so I would encourage to take that conversation a little bit deeper and ask, how are you really doing, right? And inviting that conversation, I'm here to listen. I'm here to empathize with what's going on in your life. Tell me more on a deeper level what is happening. That can open up a deeper conversation about how the friend is actually doing. And that actually can potentially lead to saving their life because you can be that listening ear, that support and encouragement um, and also Seeking professional help is also important. So you can be that person that recommends, have you thought about talking to someone about those things? So you can actually save someone's life or help to prevent a tragedy by being there for them. Yeah. Well, def what, what should we ask someone? If, if you're seeing signs and, you, and you're starting to wonder, uh, what do I do? I've heard it said you, you should ask the question, have you, have you planned? Have you thought about harming yourself? Is that something we should do? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is uh, a common sort of misconception or a myth that if we ask somebody about suicidality, then we actually will plant that idea right in their head. And that is not the case. If the person is thinking about taking their life, you're not the one planting that idea in their head. So we actually do recommend to not be afraid to ask those questions. And so it depends on what the person has expressed. And you can tell them, you've been talking about unbearable pain or suffering that you're experiencing. And you've even mentioned that, you know, death may be the only sort of escape. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? And it's okay to say, I'm concerned. I'm here to listen. How can I help? Now, if the person is actively is expressing suicidal ideation, to someone, your friend is telling you, then you can't ask them, are you having thoughts of suicide? Do you have a plan to take your own life? Have you decided how you will do it and when you'll do it? Do you have everything to carry out your plan? Those are difficult conversations to have, but asking directly again, can save someone's life. And if the answer to those questions is yes, I'm in so much pain, death feels like the only escape, I've procured the means, you know, I have a gun, I have ammunition, and I'm going to do it tonight or something like that. That is a crisis. That is an acute situation. And in that case, don't leave the person alone. Stay with them. You can take them to the nearest emergency room if they agree. You can call 911. They can call 911. They're with you. So that is an emergency. But I also wanted to let everyone know that there is a national suicide prevention lifeline and there is a phone number anyone can call, which is 988. Again, it's 988. Write it down. Tell your friends. Put it on the fridge. And that is that's a free confidential lifeline that's available 24-7. And anyone who is thinking about taking their own life or someone who is concerned for a friend can dial that number. 
So those are, what do you do in the case of emergency, right? But if a person is not necessarily actively suicidal, but they are expressing maybe, they're not in a crisis, but they are saying things that are concerning to you, right, about their mental health. It's okay to talk to them and ask them about how they're feeling. It can be hard. It's a difficult conversation to help to have, but you are there to listen more necessarily than to say something. Yeah. So having showing genuine care, show that you care, have a calming, positive presence, mm -hmm. staying patient. And so in terms of um, kind of what are some of the things to say are tell me more about some of the things you've been telling me about, right? How can I help? Let me hear some of the things you're struggling with. And then you're there, you're comfortable, you're, you're there to provide comfort, to support them. And then if the person says, I'm feeling good now, but what if these things, you know, these thoughts escalate further? You can talk about who can you call in that situation so that they have a plan so they can call a trusted family member or a friend or a therapist. And you can ask them, I can help you find a professional counselor or psychologist, psychiatrist in your area. Is that something that you know you would like help with? And you can help them. You can help them walk them through that process to make an appointment and encourage them to seek professional health help because we have a lot of treatments, mm. therapies, and medications that us as licensed providers can provide. Yeah. So encouraging your friend to seek help would be important. Yeah, wow. Well, Dr. Ord, I we can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for being with us today and just really helping us understand better how to you know deal with uh, suicides and any loved ones who are having suicidal thoughts. So thank you again, Dr. Ord. And if you or anyone you know is struggling with thoughts of suicide, please reach out to the Suicide Crisis and Prevention Hotline. Dr. Ord mentioned it. It's again, 988, just that simple three numbers, 988. Put it in your phone, put it in your notes, and please reach out to someone if you or someone you know is having suicidal thoughts. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.